Good evening, and welcome to the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame induction ceremony being held here at the Granite Club. Being held every two years. This year we are celebrating five amazing individuals who have given so much to the squash world here. Three players and one builder volunteer and one builder coach are being inducted. The players are Jamie Bentley, Samantha Cornett, and Stephanie Hewitt. Our builder volunteer who's being inducted is Ray Ga Godbold, and the builder coach, Mike Way. We're going to be starting in just a few moments. One of the features they have here at the ceremony is they like to pipe in the people that have been inducted, those that are here, and that will come up in just a few moments. Just a few words about some of our people being inducted. Jamie Bentley, who has amassed six provincial, nine national, and five U.S. titles, over 70 professional titles in all. He became a three-time world doubles champion and achieved the highest ranking, world ranking of number one in hardball doubles. Samantha Coronet has won 17 provincial and nine national singles titles with another two hardball doubles provincial titles. She's also won 13 professional tournaments and represented Canada on the senior national team Good for evening. 11 years. Good evening, everyone. We're just about Hello. to ask the people to have a seat the so that our inductees can be Can you please take your in. seats? Good evening, everyone. The event is about to start. Please take your seats.
tonight being piped in. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's Sharif Khan. today, current members that are attending with us this evening. Susan Swift, represented by Sophie Langlois, Sharif Khan, Jim Mason, represented by Martin Mason, Heather Wallace, Gerald Sugar, Dr. Ann Smith, Tony Swift, Peter Hall, Graham Writing, Mark Satchby, represented by Lauren Satchby, Barb Cooper, Jay Gillespie, represented by Lily Gillespie, Melanie Jans, Rob Brooks, Clive Caldwell, Peter Frost, Vincent Taylor, Leslie Freeman, represented by Tim Mallory, Murray Christensen, and Patrick Richardson. Please all be seated. <laughs> Members can be seated as well. welcome you all to the 10th Ontario Squash Hall of Fame induction ceremony in which five outstanding individuals will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I would like to introduce you to the inductees now. As it could be piped in.
It is with great pleasure that I now introduce you to the inductees for the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame, class of 2024. Jamie Bentley. <laughs> Samantha Cornett. <laughs> Ray Godbold. <laughs> and Stephanie Hewitt. Mike Way is unable to attend in person due to an injury requiring surgery. He is represented by Michael Manley. <laughs> Mike Way has provided a video presentation in lieu of being here in person. If the inductees would like to take their seats. qualities, outstanding and exceptional are key criteria for selection to the Hall of Fame, which has a prestigious membership and in which it is an honour to belong. If you could be a little bit quieter please, that would be uh, appreciated. When you hear of the unique and exceptional achievements, talents and abilities these five individuals have brought to the squash community, I think you will agree that they are very worthy inductees to the Hall of Fame. We had a record number of nominations this year and the Board of Governors did an excellent job with the selection process. I would right, like to recognise members of the Board of Governors if they will stand when I call their names. Peter Hall. Tony Swift. Lorraine Tetro and Pat Richardson. Kirsten Burton is also a member of the Board of Governors, but unfortunately she was unable to attend tonight um, due to pressure of work at the hospital. Squash Ontario is a wonderful partner and we sincerely appreciate the administrative assistance that Lindsay Yates and Lauren Sashvi provide. Perhaps you would stand up. I'd also like to thank Tony Swift and Lindsay Yates for the great job they've done organising this event and to the Granite Club for hosting this event. I would like to also acknowledge some notables. Simon Chan, Squash Ontario Board of Directors, Vice President of Finance. Jamie Nichols, Squash Canada CEO. Jay Nash co-chair of the Justice Club of Ontario, and perhaps you could stand up, each of you. Lolly Gillen, Secretary General of the Pan American Squash Federation. And Bill Richards, who was treasurer and a member of the ISRF Executive Committee, now World Squash Federation, from 1981 to 85, serving with Dean Stewart, and Frank Bailey. Thank you all very much for attending this evening. Before we begin this evening's celebration, I would like to recognize Sherry Funston, who, as many of you know, died unexpectedly shortly before Christmas last year and is sadly missed. Sherry and Mark Satchvi established the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame in 2004. It was something Sherry was passionate about. She provided us ongoing administrative support while she was still Squash Ontario's Executive Director, a position she held for over 30 years. And she joined the, the Hall of Fame Board of Governors when she retired. She contributed hugely to the board and did a lot of the administrative work for us. Please let's give a minute's silence for Sherry Funston. Thank you. A celebration of life for Sherry will be held at the Cricket Club on Friday, June 14th 
from 2 to 4 p.m., to which all are welcome to attend. It is now time to get on with the dinner and what we're all eagerly waiting for, the induction ceremony for the class of 2024. Our master of ceremonies, Peter Hall, is well known to the squash community, a member of the Hall of Fame and the Board of Governors. Welcome, Peter. All of you enjoy the evening. It will be a good evening experience. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame induction ceremony for the class of 2024. It's my pleasure and privilege to host this, our 10th induction ceremony. Inductions are held biennially, save and except for 2021 when COVID resulted in our canceling the event. Commencing with the class of 2005, we now have 32, soon to be 37 members of the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame. Sadly, 10 members are no longer with us, namely Jim Mason, Ian Stewart, Barney Lawrence, Mark Satchfi, Jay Gillespie, Don Leggett, Ernest Howard, Sue Swift, Jack Fairs, and Leslie Freeman. The Ontario Squash Hall of Fame was created by Squash Ontario to promote a greater awareness of the history of squash in Ontario by recognizing individuals for their outstanding achievements and exceptional contributions to the game while preserving the heritage of the game. June 2007 marked the opening of the permanent home of the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame at the White Oaks Resort and Spa in Niagara-on-the-Lake, thanks to the generosity of the Wakil family. I encourage you to visit the Hall of Fame on your next visit to the Niagara region. Also, I invite you to look at our website to view the photo galleries and records of our Hall of Fame members. Tonight, Mike Way's induction will take place during the salad course. Have we got salads in front of us? <laughs> Do we? No, maybe not. Um, followed by Jamie Bentley, and uh, then uh, Samantha Cornett and Ray Godbold after dinner, and Stephanie Hewitt over coffee and dessert. It's my great pleasure to introduce our first inductee for the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame, Class of 2024, Mr. Mike Way in the Builder Coach category. Mike has been head squash professional for over 29 years at five Toronto area squash clubs. In 1983, Mike and the late Dennis Goodfellow created the uh, Canadian Professional Squash Association, giving squash professionals the opportunity to compete across Canada. In 1997, Mike became coach of the National Training Centre based at the Toronto Racquet Club, thanks to the support of the Toronto Racquet Club membership, led by Mike Manley, Ted Clark, and yes, none other than Lolly Gillen, which is really something in a men's club. In 1999, Mike's coaching made all Canadian squash players proud with Graham Riding ranked number 10 in the world and Jonathan Power becoming world champion in 1998 and was ranked number one in the world on six separate occasions. In addition, Mike coached a four-time world champion, Egyptian Ali Farag. During his coaching career, spanning 40 plus years, Mike organized many world coaching conferences and produced highly acclaimed coaching videos. In 2010, Mike took his coaching skills south of the border after being recruited as head coach of Harvard University's Crimson Squash program, where he amassed an impressive record. Nine national team championships, five women, four men, 13 individual titles, seven women, six men. 2019 and 2020, both men's and women's teams undefeated, 14 and, and nothing, 14 and zero. Seven times Ivy League Coach of the Year, 2019 Women's Coach of Excellence, 2020 U.S. Coach of the Year for both men and women. In addition, Mike is currently advisory coach to six professional squash association players 
and five-time world champion Sarah Fitzgerald. I'm disappointed that Mike is not able to be with us tonight as he has mobility issues and scheduled, as Ann said, for knee surgery, thanks to his many years on the court. However, thanks to Jimbo Patton and Lolly Gillen, Mike is able to join us through video and is recognized in brief clips by Graham Riding and Jonathan Power. Jim. everybody. Uh, big congrats here to Mike Way on being inducted into the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame. Uh, really, really well deserved. This is a big deal. It's nice to see Mike get this recognition. Um, you know, when, I, when I'm coaching my kids or, or other players, I, I often go back to the gems that Mike drilled into our heads over the years. You know, he would, he would often say, Graham, longer rallies make for shorter matches. Or I'd really like to see 80% pace, but 100% ball control, and not the other way around. Um, and he would often remind us, you know, when you're going short, mate, don't think winner. Expect that ball to come back and take some pressure off your short game. Uh, you know, I think Mike has been so successful just given he really has a, he's got a great combination of intelligence. He's always well prepared. He's a real student of the game. Um, He's truly passionate for the game, and, and he's been extremely generous with his time over the years. So uh, big congrats to Mike. Really happy to see him get this recognition. Uh, and thank you, Mike, for everything you've taught us over the years, both on and off the court. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Mike. Congratulations on your Hall of Fame induction. Nobody deserves it more. I got the word from Graham that you were going in, and uh, I couldn't wait to do this little video to congratulate you one more time. You know we miss you and uh, so proud of all the things that you've done. Keep up the great work, buddy. Okay. You deserve it. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, Mike Way here. Uh, sorry I can't be with you tonight. Uh, as you can see, I've got my Forrest Gump outfit on. Don't ask. <clears throat> the only thing I can say is it did not involve alcohol. Um, 
First off, I want to thank Matt Easingwood for nominating me. Matt, what were you thinking and how many beers did you consume before you pressed submit? Um, and I want to thank Squash Ontario and the board for such an honor. I had quite the journey um, in our sport in Canada. Um, I came over in 81 at the Ontario Racquet Club, then moved to the Valhalla, then downtown to the Toronto Athletic Club, which was formerly, of course, the Squash Academy, and then on to the Toronto Racquet Club, and then into semi-retirement in Oakville. I have too many people to thank, <clears throat> um, but there's uh, a few shout outs uh, I definitely got to make. <clears throat> First off to Bunny Abbott. Um, Daryl Abbott uh, passed away a couple of years ago, but Daryl and Bunny brought me over from England. Thank you. Um, I then moved to the Valhalla and worked under Murray Christensen. Uh, definitely the best years a young coach could have. Uh, Murray, what, what days they were, what times. <clears throat> Just a brilliant time, brilliant club. Um, Murray realized that if you actually built a, a pub and you put squash courts behind it, you had one of the best blueprints for a sports business model ever. Well done, Murray. Um, I want to thank Ted Clark for um, hiring me and then supporting me throughout the Toronto Racquet Club. I want to thank Mike Manley for helping us start our little national training centre and then carrying the ball throughout. Mike, big thank you to you. Uh, I want to thank the players um, during that time. Uh, Melanie, Marnie, Margot, Tara, the three amigos, Graham, Jonathan and Shahir, and Victor and Kelly, you guys uh, were the backbone uh, of the program. Big shout out to Bob Bowers. Bob, absolutely couldn't have done, uh, done it without you. Um, and last, with regards to the National Training Center, my eternal gratitude to Lolly Gillen. Um, I have such um, admiration for you, and I got such a debt of gratitude, as I'm sure many others do uh, across Canada. So, Lolly, thank you very much. I also want to give a quick shout out to Dave Forgeron, Rob Brooks, and all those great coaches that, unbeknownst to them, were not just good friends, but also mentors of mine. So, thank you for that. <clears throat> when I think of Squash Ontario, uh, my memories are about those little colored posters that Sherry would send down, we put on the notice board. It's about the Toronto and District League and just the passion and enthusiasm that went into that league and the local tournaments. And of course, last, but my, by no means me, least, all those members of all those clubs um, loving the game as we all do as we did and as we still do, uh, and what special times they were. So um, I'm eternally grateful for that time here, and I think we all are grateful um, in some ways to Squash Ontario and to those, uh, those great events and great league nights that we had. So I will raise a glass uh, to all of you in a few hours' time later tonight. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. Be well. Take a break and uh, get the salad course underway.
We're going to take a bit of a break right now as they're serving the salad, and we'll get right back with the induction ceremony.
Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention please? And I know some of you are still on your salads, but if we could, uh, in the interest of time, we'd like to move along. It's my pleasure to introduce our second inductee in the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame, class of 2024, Mr. Jamie Bentley. And not surprising in the player category. Jamie began playing squash at age 14 at the Toronto Cricket Skating and Curling Club. He was first a hockey player, but after injury, switched to squash. Jamie has an outstanding record in both singles and doubles. In Ontario, he was five-time Ontario doubles champion, Ontario mixed doubles champion in 2003. In Canada, he was two-time Canadian hardball singles champion, 1989 and 1995. He was six-time Canadian open doubles champion. In 2008, he won the Canadian mixed doubles 40-plus championship. Internationally, Jamie's record is most impressive. 1993 North American doubles professional champion. Three-time world doubles champion, 94, 96, and 2000. Three-time U.S. Open doubles champion, 95, 96, and 98. In nine tournaments, Jamie is champion multiple times, including winning his father's Cambridge Club invitation uh, five different times. Overall, Jamie has won 32 championship titles titles and achieved a doubles world ranking of number one in 1994 with partner Kenton Jernigan and in 1996 with partner Hall of Famer Gary Waite. Quite a record. He, outside of playing competitively, Jamie's worked at the Cambridge Club for nearly 40 years. Gary Waite, uh, who was going to be here tonight, uh, but uh, had to cancel, uh, wanted to send through a little toast, so I'll read his toast for him. It's, uh, this is from Gary Waite. It is rare for someone through life's up and downs, responsibilities and constant pressures to so unrelentingly pursue their passion. But when they do, it's a gift to those around them. Jamie's such a rarity, and we are all the better for it. Thanks, buddy, for teaching me how to play this wonderful game and letting me share your passion for it. That's from Gary Waite. Please give a warm welcome to one of the best right wallers to ever play the game, Jamie Bentley. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Peter. It's probably the nicest thing you've ever said to me. I've known you a long time. Thank you, Nominee uh, Nation Committee, and a big thank you to Jessica DeMauro for uh, putting me forward. I'm humbled to be among the legends of our sport. Being up here today with these nominees is a great honor. Congratulations, Sam, Stephanie, Ray, and Mike. I want to acknowledge my table, my brothers Jay and John, John's wife Paula, longtime mentor and great friend Billy McDonnell, one of my best, best friends Don Newman who flew out here from Invermere, BC, and my partner in crime, Amy Perfena. Amy incidentally has never seen squash. <laughs> I stopped competing long before we met but she came clean about something when I told her about the induction. She said that when we first started dating, she found a podcast um, interview with Jim Zuck and myself. And then a year or so ago, when she couldn't sleep, she listened to it again and fell asleep <laughs> instantly. And now she uses the interview as a sleep aid. She, she has no idea what happened after juniors. Um, I want to acknowledge who isn't here as I wish they were. My mom, my dad, two sisters, Janice and Jill, my daughter, Nicole, son-in-law, Robbie, and my new three-month-old granddaughter, Zoe. So, 
I wish I could thank, uh, thank everyone who came to support me by name, but that would take a bit of time. So thank you, everyone. A special thank you to the Cricket Club crew. And a huge thank you uh, to the boys from the Cambridge Club. Thank you very much. <laughs> Love it. So in summer uh, of 1977, I broke my humerus bone and dislocated my shoulder. And that was the end of, of, of the hockey and the beginning of the full-time squash. By the age of 16, I was undisciplined, racket-breaking, bad-tempered junior squash player who could not handle losing. My dad had a plan and arranged a match with a guy at the Cambridge Club. In the warm-up, I noticed he was wearing his headband upside down. He was a bit hunched over, punchy strokes, and had huge feet. I gave my dad our you joking look. You might have guessed it, he destroyed me. We sat down and he could see I was ready to lose my mind and he said, let's do that again in a couple of weeks. I said, yeah, sure, whatever. And then I asked him, are you like a surgeon or a baby doctor? He said, without missing a beat, Dr. Jerry Sugar said, no, I'm a psychiatrist. <laughs> I let out a super uncomfortable laugh and there began 45 year friendship on and off the court and on the couch. Dr. Sugar has been extraordinarily loyal on many levels and never said no to talking, whether after a squash hits in the sauna or meeting for a coffee. His knowledge of what's going on in the mind while competing was unbelievable. Dr. Sugar, thank you for all your help and wisdom. I want to, I want to thank my doubles partners, and I was lucky to play with so many awesome players. They shared their knowledge, answering my countless questions, and offering amazing guidance as mentors. I love being part of the team and what that brought. Training, being accountable, strategizing, battling, traveling, experiencing the highs and lows of competition, not to mention the unforgettable post-match celebrations. Uh, now my opponents, I must sincerely apologize for any intense moments on the court due to my passion and approach to the game. Sometimes I confessed I may have tippy-toed a bit too close to the line and on occasion vaulted over it. For that, I am sorry. Last and certainly not least, I'm not standing here today without my dad. This award has awakened me to how much my dad influenced my squash journey. When I received a text from Ann Smith about the induction, he was the first person I thought about. In the squash world, we were connected. He gave me the landscape to explore and the opportunities to grow, introducing me to some amazing coaches, players, and people, and giving me two fantastic clubs, the cricket and the Cambridge club and then gave me the freedom to move within. He was at every tournament and he could, he could and never was at a loss for words regardless of what happened during the matches. My dad could dissect matches and discover weaknesses like no one else. He was great to have in your corner and I believe with all my heart that he would be the proudest person here. And with that, this one's for you, Dad. Thank you. We're going to break for dinner now. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, could I get you to take your seats? In five minutes, we'll start to uh, renew the program. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Please be seated. It's my great pleasure to introduce our third inductee into the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame class of 2024, Samantha Sam Cornett in the player category. Sam has an outstanding record at the provincial, national, and international levels. First, her provincial championships. Five open and five closed. Two junior under 19 closed. One junior under 17 closed. One junior under 15 closed. Nationally, she was Canadian junior under 17 closed. Canadian junior under 17 open champion. Member of the Canadian junior national team from 2005 to 2009, four-time Canadian Clothes Champion, 2020 and 2022 Canadian Univers University Champion, a member of the Canadian National Team from 2010 to 2022. At the international level, she competed at the 2011 Pan Am Games in Mexico, winning team gold and individual silver. There's more. 2015 Pan Am Games in Toronto, winning Team Silver and Double Silver. 2019 Pan Am Games in Peru, winning Team Silver, Double Silver, and Individual Bronze. She also competed in the Commonwealth Games, 2010 in India, 2014 in Scotland, and 2018 in Australia. Sam has won 13 Women's Professional Championships over her long career. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming this well-traveled, many-time champion, world rank number 23 in 2018, the current manager of Athlete Development for Squash Canada, Sam Cornett. to be standing here. I can't uh, believe I'm in the same group as my fellow inductees. Congratulations to you all. And also now in, in with the, the legends of the Hall of Fame, so many of whom are my role models. Thank you to my nominator, Jessica. Uh, you win if there's a prize for you know nominating the right people that got, got in, <laughs> champion. Um, and also to the board and to Squash Ontario, these kinds of things are not easy to put together. Uh, it takes a lot of work, a lot of coordinating, a lot of planning, um, and a lot of your time. So thank you so much. Uh, a round of applause for the board in Squash Ontario. Thank you so much. Um, it's not often that people will sit, oh, look at this, and listen to you with a drink in their hand and you know quietly listen to you talk about yourself. So. I'm a little nervous, but I'm going to also enjoy this. Um, I'm here today uh, because, and you can nod along if you can relate to any of this. Um, you know, I played hockey. Hockey took a really long time to get my gear on. Uh, soccer, there were a lot of mosquitoes. Uh, curling was pretty cold. Tennis, I kept having to like run or crawl around the fence to go and get the ball. Um, but then squash, is, was, it was just right. Um, I played with balloons when I first started. I was playing with people of all ages. Um, and the ball is never you know, too far away. I liked that. Um, and when I was little, I just I loved it right from the get-go. It was easy. Um, and then you know, things kind of took off from there. So I'm going to give you a bit of a background. I started playing with Alex, my sister, on court next to our parents. Uh, and then one day, our little club in Deep River was a beneficiary of the, one of the Squash Ontario outreach programs, which 
uh, made me really catch the squash bug, you know, into lots of sports. But after that one program, which I've seen Squash Ontario do so well over the years, that was it. Um, I loved it. And so when we did eventually move to Ottawa, I trained, you know, with the next level of competition. And then I made the leap to Toronto and the senior national team and the PSA World Tour. Uh, and now, uh, not along again, if you can, uh, can relate to this, I am that person that, you know, I see a squash racket on the street, on a flight, I have to stop and say hi. Um, uh, so really, the squash community is, is like home for me, like it is for so many of us. And I have uh, kind of like was touched on by Jamie, there's, there's countless people to thank. Um, I'm here today because not because of just rising from the ashes of nothing, everyone made me who I am. So, um, and many of them are in this room, for the record. Um, and that's really shaped, shaped me as a person and a squash player. And uh, from my family, uh, to my coaches, to my billets, uh, Phil's here tonight, um, uh, to tournament promoters, uh, I can't even thank all the wonderful squash associations that have put on so many events, like was mentioned, that we get to play in. Uh, I'm just overall just so grateful for the passionate people, the, the characters that squash has. Um, and I'm gonna go in a little deeper on this right now. I, I have eight minutes and I have a feeling I'm already kind of close, but uh, I simply, I couldn't go through everything all of these people have done for me, so I'm just going to uh, touch on a bunch of things um, and thank you for your patience because I know it's a lot. So first up, I'd like to thank Heather, Heather Wallace. Um, uh, again, like these could be very long, but Really, to sum it up, Heather, thank you for your countless hours on court with me. And more than that, thank you for being on court with me uh, and a friend in one of the darkest times of my life. Um, Jess, thank you for so much time on court and helping me learn how to lunge. <laughs> it's harder than it sounds, apparently. Um, watching my matches around the world at 2, 3, 6 a.m., and then plotting and scheming with me and celebrating with me uh, and encouraging me to, to pursue my best. Um, yeah, big round of applause for uh, My parents, Vinnie Taylor, Gary Slate, Jeff Warren and Control the T, Harrow and Black Knight, uh, to all of those people who sponsored me and supported me, I wouldn't have even begun Everything would have been over before it even started if it weren't for you all. So thank you so much. Can I get a round of applause for them? <laughs> Jamie Nichols, Jonathan Power, Gary Waite, for selflessly creating a hub at the NSA while us pros took everything for granted um, and focused entirely on ourselves. Um, and Jamie, thank you again for seeing potential uh, and mentoring me into this world of my second career at Squash Canada, uh, just beginning, but I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, my first ever coach, Vihar Joshi. Barb Cooper is here tonight. Mike Way, Steve Wren, Yvon Provencal, Jamie Hickox, Martin Heath, Shauna Flath, Mel Jans is here tonight. Um, Scott Arnold, Carlo Chilotti, Mike Savage, Dave Cooper, and Jordan Banner. These are all super important names to me. Uh, thank you all for lighting and keeping lit that fire in me and for all your squash training and life advice. Thank you so much. Uh, I know this is probably relatable. The, the community that you grow up in, the Ottawa and Wallace squash community for me, um, accepted juniors on the scene. You know, you show up at league and you're that 12, 13, 14 year old. And uh, I sincerely appreciate folks like Vinny, like Lorraine, for all of your time that you spent with me when I was way worse than you. And then when I was better and you, you handled me with such grace. And I uh, honestly, that's shaped me in a, in a big way. So thank you. <laughs> Uh, and to, to all the, there's a lot of coaches in this room at clubs and um, to all of the clubs in Toronto, 
Thank you for providing an awesome, open atmosphere for all of us pros to train. I think that's a really important part of um, when I moved to Toronto, everyone was very welcoming, so I really appreciate that. Squash Ontario and Squash Canada, um, now that I'm on the other side, thank you so much for all of your work. I can't even express how many things uh, I took for granted, so thank you to them. Um, my teammates for bringing out the best in each other and now being wonderful friends. Uh, we call ourselves the Golden Girls if we may so indulge in such a, <laughs> in such a title. Um, thank you for everything, for all the, t the travel and the tournaments together. Uh, my granite bosses, Jim and Jess, Woo! Uh, for taking me in, uh, if you can imagine, 15 years ago, I really don't feel like it was that long, but uh, 15 years ago, and also put your hands up if you're a granite junior, yay, thank you so much for coming. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, you've taught me a lot of things that I need to know as like a slightly older person now and um, I you know I really appreciate you letting us as your coaches witness your your competitive journeys and I love seeing how you all create a home around the squash courts uh, it makes me really happy uh, and finally finally uh, my wonderful and supportive parents Jan and Jack my sister Alex my cousin Leanne my partner Arjun my whole family for handling the tears and the joy, the ups and the downs. There were quite a few. Uh, and also a special shout out to my grandparents. Um, they dealt with me with such grace for six years while uh, after I moved to Toronto and I couldn't even imagine playing pro and being out, you know, out of your house for two or three weeks out of every month um, and paying rent. That's heartbreaking, can't, can't have that. <laughs> Um, I can't, uh, you know, in the end here, I, I just can't wait to see where squash goes in the next four years and, and beyond that. Um, now we're getting into this upcoming Olympic cycle. I'm really excited. Uh, there's so many people in this room who are going to have their hands on athletes and organizations and associations, lolly, uh, and funding that will help make a huge difference for not only our athletes that are at the top of the game, but also reaching so many more people who are going to fall in love with the sport like everyone in this room uh, and everything it has to offer. I'm very excited uh, and I'm truly, truly grateful for you all listening to me tell about my story and giving me a chance to, to thank so many people uh, and I'm very grateful to be part of this squash community with all of you. Thank you so much, enjoy your evening. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to introduce our fourth inductee into the class of 2024 Ontario Squash Hall of Fame in the Builder Volunteer category, Mr. Ray Godbold. In 1980, <clears throat> Ray was recruited to the Squash Ontario Board by Hall of Famer Peter Frost. As a chartered accountant, Ray served as treasurer and was elected president in 82-83. In 1983, he was elected to the board of the CSRA, now Squash Canada, serving as treasurer before becoming president in 85-86. During Ray's term, three major squash tournaments were held. The first, the Can first Canadian Open men's and women's softball tournament and the World Masters Games in Toronto. As a jester, Ray was an active board member and played a major role with the Jesters Foundation benefiting junior and university squash. Over the years, Ray generously provided counsel to a number of squash clubs experiencing financial challenges. 
Ray introduced the urban squash program to his alma mater, Huron College, at the University of Western Ontario. And the college now provides some full and partial scholarships to urban squash graduates from the Jane Finch area. As a player, Ray, Ray was regarded as a useful player, but he didn't... Uh, But he didn't reach the podium until turning the ripe old age of 70, <laughs> winning the century doubles with none other than Jamie Nichols, the Ontario Vets 70 plus with Mike Manley, the Smitty 70 plus with Jay Humans, the Ontario Vets 75 plus twice with Molson Robertson, and the Canadian Vets 70 plus, 75 plus again with Molson. So he's had great partners, and that uh, helps uh, make him a good player. Ray was a longtime member of the Canadian team in the Lapman Grant matches, serving as co captain in 2022 and 2023. Please join me in welcoming my good friend and a true builder of the game, Ray Godbold. Well, thank you very much. Um, as uh, Jamie introduced his family, I'd, I'd like to take 30 seconds and introduce my three children, uh, Lee, Michael, and Jill. There are significant others. My cousin, Lindsay, who's filling in for my, my brother, who's unfortunately not well, and his wife, Dorothy. And of course, my guest is Gail Grant, wife of the late Barry Grant, who I met in 1965 at Huron College and became uh, a mentor, a confidant, and my best friend until he passed away. Um, I'm very humbled and honored to be elected as uh, into the, uh, the, the Sports Hall of Fame when Ann phoned me on a cloudy Saturday afternoon. I thought for sure that they'd finally recognized my usefulness as a doubles player <laughs> from 1975 to 2015, where I was cannon fodder. Um, and then I, 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 now, I thought she was asking me to, those that had survived uh, championship. Um, the, uh, sorry. Grateful to be, I'm grateful to be inductee as into the builder volunteer category Apparently, my rise from being can't, uh, no, I've already done that one. Uh, the Builder Volunteer category con contrib contributes contributions to our game and to community, and no one realizes more than I how lucky I am to stand here and how many people out there are equally as deserving. We've all played sports from young children and learned so many life lessons from them. Um, relying on the advice of coaches or mentors, learning to be part of a team, um, being humble in victory and gracious in defeat. Some of my friends from the cricket club might want to remember that one. <laughs> and um, just uh, amazing how many life lessons we learned through the game of sport. Builders volunteers are basically the roadies of organizations, teams, clubs, pros, who offer their time and their talents without question. Such as Squash Ontario, uh, junior development, refereeing, 
in order that we as players can enjoy the game of squash in the seamless manner that we are so accustomed to with the great organization that we have in Ontario. In the late 70s, the growth of the Ontario squash community was unimaginable. There was an expansion of commercial clubs throughout the GTA and the rest of Ontario. The Gordy Andersons, Jim Bentleys, Clive Caldwells, Peter Halls, Mary Christensen's, Mary Grants, and many others not named were instrumental in developing access to the game. In hindsight, there was probably more development during that area than there was by Doug Ford or Rob Ford in doing cannabis shops in Ontario during COVID. <laughs> in the midst of all this, almost unnoticed, perhaps because we are so polite Canadians, we were lucky enough to have the king and queen of squash, Sharif Khan and Heather Mackay, two of the most unassuming and friendly people you would ever want to meet. With the tremendous growth of squash, Squash Ontario was experiencing billing and collecting process because originally you were an individual member of Squash Ontario. So we didn't have things like internet or club link or any of that stuff back then. It was a fax and a telephone. With the growth of all the clubs, thank God everyone got along together and we went to the billing system and got Squash Ontario out of debt and, and fear of cash flow into one of the pro most profitable and non-profitable organizations in Ontario. As part of that, we had so much money one year, the government forced us to spend about $20,000. So Sherry Funston, uh, the Margaret Thatcher of squash, 37 years, the Iron Lady, who was a wonderful person, decided with the board's help, amazingly, that we would spend $20,000 on a media campaign down in London, Ontario, which keep in mind had one private club and the university courts. The slogan and branding was, is squash better than zucchini? <laughs> brilliant, just brilliant. When we did an assessment of how successful the program was, we can only recall receiving three or four letters from the Southwestern Ontario Farm Produce uh, thanking us for encouraging their crops and, and increasing sales amazingly. The, the, uh, I'd like to dispel the, the, the rumor that has been going around that I am a financial genius. Uh, far from it. The cash flow issue was simply resolved by invoking the great economist Confucian, Confucius who said, no ticky, no laundry, so clubs who didn't play didn't get to join Squash Ontario or enjoy any of their programs. As I said before, it did turn out to be the most profitable organization, non-profit, and continues to be so today. At Squash Ontario, I immediately fell in love with their brand and logo by the legendary late Jim Mason, one of the original inductees in the Squash Hall of Fame. F, F, F. Fun, fitness, and friendship. For over 45 years, I've heartily embraced the bookends of that slogan, being fun and friendship, and the occasional log nod to the fitness part. One of the longest lasting contributions by volunteers was the creation of the TD League by J, J, and E. John Harvey, John Lee, and Eddie Brock. The League began, has become running for over 45 years, and in my case, Thursday nights was sacrosanct. Prior to COVID and for the last number of years before COVID, at one point there were a thousand squash players in Ontario playing T and D league with uh, all clubs having at least four teams with uh, uh, six people a team. And it ended up 
there would be a closing dinner and championship night at the uh, cricket club, followed by a lovely, lovely dinner. Another slogan, ABC, was anything but the cricket and championship <laughs> nights. And it actually worked out every once in a while, but the cricket club had, they had so many members, and it was like a fighting at the Trojan War. There was just masses of people coming up to play you every Thursday. You never knew who the hell they were, but um, they said they played for the cricket, and they did have a very good program. When I first came out of university, my first club was the um, Hard Scrabble Cotton Club down on Hayden Street, which had a half empty pool, a pit for a locker room, players by the name of Butcher Bill O'Malley, uh, John Swan, who used to come out and have a cigarette and a beer between matches, um, but all characters. I then graduated to the Toronto Squash Club on Lombard Street, then the Granite Club, uh, the Cambridge Club, which was my home away from home, and big shout out to you guys that are here tonight. One of the inductees tonight was the first guy to bled me, that bled me, and that was Jamie, because uh, Eric Baldwin and I were up in a pro-am, 1411, and Jamie wasn't very happy for that, so he just drilled me in the leg. And I had this wonderful red mark for about six weeks, but at the time, there was a starburst of blood, little droplets like a clock, on my leg. Um, so thank you for that, Jamie. And I, I did end up at the TRC, which is the oldest club in Toronto and, and a great, great club. Um, another great part of the builders and developers were the various tournaments that you could set your clock by every year. Started off in Buffalo, or Rochester, New York, the Smitty, and who can ever forget that, uh, was more what happened off the court than what happened on the court, but lots of fun. Kiva, if you ever had a chance to go to Kiva down in Santa Fe, ah. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was amazing. Followed by Buffalo, um, where, which was overpopulated by Ontario residents, but it was great. And, but you kept going back year and year because you knew that the buffalo you ate, was that the cause of your gastro pain the next day? <laughs> or just that you overdid it? The U.S. Nationals, the Can-Am, the Lapham Grant, and uh, the Century in New York run by Kit Tatum for a number of years. And Kit's here tonight, and we thank him for that. And all, all, these, all these things were put together by volunteers and, and, and committees that gave their time and effort freely. The other end of F was friendships. There is in life the, uh, the life lesson that the people you meet along the journey make the, or people along the road make the journey worthwhile. And there's no other community than the squash community that makes this more true. In my years of involvement, I met many incredible and great people. I don't mean BFFs or Hill fellow well-met relationships, but real relationships where you really get to know and, uh, a person and find out what makes them tick. In the friendship category, another life lesson has been confirmed. There's an old adage that if eight people were, were to throw their bag of troubles in the middle of a round table to be discussed, at the end of the evening, each of those individuals would take their own bag home. Life's not easy, life's not always fair, and we have to learn by it and live with our disappointments and our successes. So as a builder and a volunteer, to a wonderful community, I love the time that I've had. It says being told that you are 
appreciated is one of the simplest yet most incredible things you're ever willing to hear. So take time to go volunteer, get involved, meet new people, help organizers and committees run this, this the great system that we have. You'll find it very rewarding and to give of your time and effort is all about life and the best way to do it. And, and before I close, I'd like to, uh, to mention one individual uh, who I think I was a mentor for a while, Jamie Nichols, who turned not only Squash Canada, but Squash Ontario on its ass and became uh, such a driving force. He also was a squash partner of mine once, uh, but this is a situation that the mentor became the mentee. Although Jamie can still needs a little work with his ball team that he runs in the summer. They've yet to become successful. Um, the, uh, the other, a brief 30 second caption of the builder part and what I had to do at Squash Ontario and um, Squash Canada. Uh, I actually dealt with uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs receiving a call the, uh, one day at the office from a representative asking if I was aware of Sir Ron Aldridge and a crew of Canadians who were touring, to say it nicely, Singapore. And I had run into difficulty or whatever, and I, I acknowledged that yes, I did know this Sir Ron Aldridge, the great cricketer and great squash player, and that was the end of the conversation. But they did a lot of damage over there, but uh, they had a lot of fun. We used the Glen Eagles Accord, not many people in this room probably know about it, um, to ban one of our inductees, early inductees, for playing in South Africa. This particular inductee, who unfortunately is not here tonight, got smart, moved to New York, set up a bunch of clubs, and became very successful. Um, we banned a player in Ontario for his tendency to have his fist and racket run into things, mainly people's heads, people's faces. Legend goes that an incident at the Thistle Club uh, many, many years ago resulted in a victim's toupee. Yes, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> flooding, flooding the thing. In closing, <laughs> I think. Okay. In closing, as is my habit, I'd like to propose a toast to absent friends, too numerous to mention, who have contributed so much to this great game and community. Thank you. We'll take a break for dessert and then we'll come back with our last inductee, Stephanie Hewitt.
at these guys. Three minutes and we'll uh, con continue the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, could you be seated, please? Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to introduce our fifth and final inductee into the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame, class of 2024. In the player category, Stephanie Hewitt. <laughs> Stephanie has an outstanding record as a great champion in both singles and doubles. In Ontario, Stephanie was 1999 Ontario Closed Singles Champion, 2001 Ontario University Player of the Year, 11-time Ontario Open Doubles Champion with seven different partners, 10-time Ontario Mixed Doubles Champion with four different partners, including husband James four times. <laughs> Six-time Ontario 40-plus Doubles Champion with five different partners. So Stephanie really does spread it around, I can tell you that. Which is good, the other people are the benefactors. Nationally, Stephanie attained a ranking of number five in Canadian singles, was a member of the Canadian team from 96 until 2000, eight-time Women's Open doubles champion, six-time Century doubles champion, Canadian 35-plus and 45-plus singles champion. At the international level, she was a member of the Canadian Pan Am team in 1998, four-time World doubles champion, five-time U.S. Open doubles, doubles champion, and a U.S. Mixed Open doubles champion in 2004 with husband James. Over and above her great playing career, Stephanie's made substantial contributions to our game as a member of the Squash Ontario Board from 2003 to 2007, serving as president in 2006-2007.
She was co-captain of the Can-Am Cup in 2010 and 2015, elected a jester in 2014, and inducted into the Toronto Cricket Club Squash Hall of Fame in 2019. Please join me in welcoming Stephanie Hewitt into the Ontario Squash Hall of Fame. putting my glasses on here. Uh, thank you to everyone for being here this evening. I feel extremely fortunate to be included with such an accomplished group of inductees. Thank you, Peter, for your, nom your introduction to the Ontario Squash Hall Fame Board of Governors, to Lindsay and Squash Ontario, who put so much time into organizing this evening. Thank you to James for nominating me and for my friends and family at my table. Squash has been the most important part of my life for 45 years, and many people have been involved in getting me to where I am today. The three most common questions I get asked over the years are, how old were you when you started playing, where did you go to college, and did you meet your husband through squash? Well, I began playing at age eight at the Ottawa Athletic Club after watching Heather Mackay play. I then moved to Queensview Good Life, where Heather Wallace soon became the pro. I did not meet Sam there. I have a few years on her. <laughs> she was probably not even born, actually. Um, I loved playing junior tournaments, the billeting, trips in Margot Green's dad's nine-seater station wagon, and of course, who could forget the famous cricket club dances. I trained hard and told my mom all I wanted to do was play squash. She didn't approve of this singular sport, but did agree with the only caveat that I complete grade six piano. Um, unfortunately, in grade 11, I lost a very close friend and stopped playing for a few years. Taking the time off was challenging. I tried to come back but had become ineligible. For Although by eight months pregnant, we had adjusted to length games only. With kids, singles competition became difficult, but doubles was more manageable and still allowed me to continue to play squash and compete at a high level. I also recognized early on that there was one main difference between doubles and singles, besides singles being exhausting. In doubles, whether it's a fun hit or a tournament, you are expected to hit the bar to have a beer or two. I really like that part of the game. I have had the good fortune to play and practice with so many amazing women. Shauna, Jessica, Narelle, Marnie, Steph, Marcy, Nikki, Rebecca, Tara, Tammy, Jody, Robin, Karen, Meredith, Dana, and many others. My most memorable matches include winning the World Devils with Shauna in Toronto. We have been friends since we were 13 and have played innumerable matches as partners as well as opponents. Through all of that, we have remained best friends and winning that title with her, with her was very special. Another memorable match was with Jess who had put up with me on the left wall as I had switched to that, left, to that side for the season so we could practice together for Worlds. Jess was also extremely patient with an extra traveling companion, my six-month-old daughter Natasha, who came to every event. <laughs> we practiced extremely hard to get that world title in San Francisco. Actually, my Hall of Fame photo was taken after our finals win. Sorry, Jess, you are not in that photo. <laughs> Similarly, I have played with amazing men. James, most importantly, I do need to mention him first. He has put up, we put up with some evil stares over the years, mostly undeserved, but he does have a tendency to let his focus drift at times. <laughs> James has always been supportive of me playing tournaments with other men. Victor Berg, Will Mariani, Robin Clark, Scott Dalmage, Scott Stoneberg, Jamie Bentley, and Pat Richardson and also my regular hitting partners, John Hall, Scott Gladhill, Chris and Paul Duratney, Taylor Fawcett, Jamie Nichols, Pete McCarthy, Rob Borden, Rob Pong, Paul Gartenberg. Recognizing that I'm not necessarily the most relaxed partner to play with, I definitely benefited from playing with Victor Berg, not just for his incredible squash skill, but his carefree court demeanor. We were playing in the quarterfinals of the World Mix in Chicago, and I got a case of the yups on my serve. I actually could not serve, and I probably hit seven double faults a game. 
Victor just laughed it off, simultaneously being able to fake serve and then hit a winning ace from behind his back. Victor and I did win the World Mix that year, thanks to my serving backhand from both the right and left boxes. Incredibly, these serving yeps lasted almost two years before I could properly again hit with my forehand, or serve with my forehand. I've also been able, I've also been fortunate to be part of the larger squash community, Squash Canada, Squash Ontario, the Cricket Club Squash Committee, Committee the Ontario Jesters, Cricket Club Monday Night House League, OSDL, which used to be Men's Doubles League, thanks to Chris Ratney for convincing Ed Bratt and the OSDL to allow women to play. T&D singles, women's doubles T&D, um, and the many pro and amateur tournaments that I've been fortunate to travel to. A special thanks to those who have sponsored me, Dave Rosen and Harris Sports, Johan Ogren and Spec Ops, and Trevor Monder and Echelon Wells. Also a huge thanks to Doug Mackay and the sponsors of the Women's Canadian Pro Doubles hosted for five years and which has raised over $125,000 for breast cancer. I'm almost done, Tony. Are you timing me? <laughs> Squash is providing me with a wonderful group of friends and community, whether it is a girls' night with Shauna and Penny, fish and chips with Tony, a post-game beer at the cricket, or even an email check-in from Bill Richards, and this week, a handwritten congratulatory note from Jim, Ken Jim Kenward. In addition to these relationships, Squash has taught me life lessons that I truly believe in and hope that my kids will also experience. It takes a lot of things to work out to become a world or national champion, including hard work, focus, desire, belief, some luck, and definitely giving things up to achieve your goals. I still get nervous before my match matches, although not as nervous as I do watching my, Nata my daughter Natasha figure skate. And so I hope my children can appreciate this willing to compete, win or lose, and learn it for themselves in sport and in life. In closing, I'd like to thank everyone for their support of me, my parents, children, and James, my number one fan. And finally, to everyone here who has made squash such a special part of my life. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up our 2024 induction ceremonies. We'll look forward to having you back uh, in 2026 when we find three to five qualified candidates. I hope you enjoyed your evening. Nice to see everyone. Good night. Yeah.
Hi everybody, 